In this video for Math 98, we're looking at sections 13.6 and 13.7 from homework number 7. These are like problems 11 through 19 on the homework. And let's begin. Okay, let's remember some of our information about the compound interest that we talked about earlier in this course. The future value or the amount you'll have in the future of an investment of P at an interest rate R compounded n times per year for t years it was given by this formula. Let's practice a little bit with this. I'm just going to invest the thousand dollars at five percent for one year. So let's do this with annual compounding. With annual compounding your future value is going to be a thousand dollars times one plus five percent over one to the one times one. Now, using your calculator, see if you can find that answer. I get 1,050, so that's very nice. Let's suppose that you get a little bit monthly compounding. So monthly compounding, we're going to take 5% divided by 12, and do this to 12 times 1. So again, using your calculator, 1,000, 1 1.05 divided by 12, raised to the 12th. Okay, well, let's see what we get there. So that's a thousand one plus point zero five divided by 12 raised to 12. I get approximately a thousand and fifty one dollars and sixteen cents. So that's a little bit more but not much. Now let's say you do this daily compounding that's 1,000 plus 0 .05 divided by 365 raised to the 365 times 1. I'm not going to multiply by 1 this time. Just use that the way it is. And let's use our calculator here. That's approximately $1,051.27. So you've earned a few more cents, but not a whole lot. Let's suppose you did this every hour. If you did this every hour, again, I would take that 0.5 and I'd divide by 8,760 and raise to the 8,760. So if I do that, 1 plus 0.5 divided by 8,760 raised to the 8,760, I end up getting $1,051.27.09. So I didn't even really gain another penny. And let's suppose you did this every single second. If you did that, that would be $1,000 plus 0 .05 divided by 31,536,000. We're going to raise that to 31,536,000. And if you do this, Let's take a moment to do that. 31,536,536,000. Raised to 31,536,000. I still get that this is about $1,051.27.14. So you see that as you increase the number of times that you are compounding, this seems to be approaching a value of about $1,051.27. This idea leads us to the idea of what happens to this form 1 plus 1 over n to the nth power when you use various values. Let me try this on my calculator. I'm going to clear things out here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to y equals, and I'm going to put in 1 plus 1 divided by x raised to the x. And I'm going to set up a table, but this time I'm going to use ask for my independent variable. And I'm going to go over to my table, and I'm going to put in one of these values, 1. You see the answer is 2. 2, the answer is 2.5. 12. The answer is 2.613. 52, the answer is 2.6926. 365, 
2.7160, So it looks like, oh, and let's just put in 31,500, 31,300, what was that, 536,000 there. And you'll see that that looks very much like this number here, which we call E. And E is the limit. What happens to 1 plus 1 over n to the nth power as n goes to infinity? This is an irrational number, kind of like pi, in that it never repeats and it never terminates. It is called E after Leonard Euler, who is a famous mathematician from history. And this is an incredibly useful number that is used frequently in science. If you look at your calculator, you'll see that E is all over the place on here. If I zoom in a little, okay, you'll see there's an E to the X right here above this little button that says LN. There's also an E above the division sign. So to get E, we're going to use this E to the X above LN. So I just want to calculate a few of these like e cubed. So what you would do is say second ln. Notice that gives you a parenthesis already. Put 3 in there and the parentheses. And this is approximately 20.09, just about. Okay, again, be careful with your rounding there. That's a 20, not a 26. e to the 1 half, second, excuse me, whoops, second ln to the 1 half. You can put 1 divided by 2 or 0.5, but don't forget your parentheses there. That's going to be about 1.648 or 1.649 approximately. e to the 1 over e, no problem. Do second ln 1 divided by, in this case it might be more useful to use the e under the division sign. So second divide gives you that e, and that gives you 1 0.44 about. 1 over e squared, that's 1 divided by e. Again, second ln with 2. And that's going to be about 1.353 or something like that. And how about e to the minus e? See if you can do that one yourself. And then start the video when you're ready. So second ln. And then minus e, I'm going to use this sign for negative. And just for fun, I'm going to use the E over the division sign. And that's going to be about 0 0.066 or so. So E is a useful constant that we're going to use all the time. It is approximately 2.718. So that's kind of the approximation. Kind of like we say pi is approximately 3.14. Now let's go back to this idea of interest. Interest was this formula. And I'm going to rewrite this by dividing the top and bottom of this fraction by r. That doesn't change anything here. And I'm going to rewrite this by rewriting this as n divided by r times r. Notice n divided by r times r is still n. Now if you look at this right here, and you notice as n goes to infinity, as we increase the number of times per year that we calculate interest, the interest rate doesn't change. It's constant. So n divided by r also goes to infinity. And if you stare at this for a while, you'll see this looks like this 1 plus 1 over x to the x. And as this goes to infinity, this goes to e. So this gives us the formula s equals p times e to the rt, where this is interest continuously compounded. This is the upper limit that you can possibly get to. Some people remember this formula by remembering P-E-R-T or PERT, like the shampoo. So this is the PERT formula. Let's look at how you apply this. What is the value of principal after one year with interest compounded continuously, where P is 1,000 and 5% interest? So I'm going to use this formula. P is 1,000. Interest rate is 5%, and t is 1. So I can multiply 5% times 1. That's not really that important. Use your calculator here. 
1000, second ln 0 0.05, and this tells me that this is about $1,051.27. You can see that that's very close to what we were looking at before, okay? And that is our upper limit on that example. Here's another example, a little different. What amount of money will you need to invest at 10% compounded continuously to have 250,000 in 20 years? So again, I'm gonna use this formula. So this will be 250,000. And my principal, I don't know, right? I don't know what that is, but I know my interest rate is 10%. And I want to multiply that by 20 years. So I can solve this problem by dividing both sides by e to the 0.1 times 20. Now it's pretty easy to multiply 0.1 times 20, isn't it? That's just 2. So I'll just do that right here. So take a moment to do this on your calculator. See what answer you get when you do this. I get approximately $33,833.82. So there you go. So that 33000 will grow to, to a quarter of a million in that time period. All right. Logarithms also can have a base of any number, any positive number. Since e is a positive number, logarithms can have a base e. The log base e of x is called the natural logarithm, and we use a special notation. It's ln of x. Remember, ln of x means log base e of x. For example, we're going to do these problems both by hand and by the calculator. ln e is log base e of e. What power do you raise e to to get e? You should recognize that as being 1. So if I use my calculator, there's an ln button down here. You can see it. Ln of e, again, second divide gives me a useful e, gives me 1. Ln e to the fourth is log base e of e to the fourth. Shouldn't take you too long to realize that is 4. If you need to use your calculator, you could say ln e to the fourth, and that's 4. How about this one? Ln 1 over e is ln e to the minus 1. That's what 1 over e means. So that should be negative 1. Again, checking with our calculator, ln 1 divided by e is negative 1. And ln 1 is log base e of 1. Do you remember that the log of any base of 1 is equal to 0? If I raise e to the 0 power, I get 1. Let's try it here ln1, sure enough, is 0. So you need to get used to this e and this natural logarithm. Here's a problem that you can see on WebAssign. Let's go through this. You're given the logarithmic equation. You're supposed to write it with base e in the logarithm. Convert that to an exponential equation, and then tell me what y equals. So writing y equals ln e with base e in the logarithm gives me this. Now, what's the exponential equation? Remember, that's e to the y equals e. Now, of course, this is e to the first, so that should tell you that y equals 1. y equals ln 1 is the same as saying y equals log base e of 1. So that's e to the y equals 1. And that should tell you that y equals 0. Log base 0, let's see what happens here. That's the log base e of 0 equals y. That gives you e to the y equals 0, and that does not exist. You can't raise a positive number to a power and get the answer 0, and e is a positive number. It's 2.718, so that doesn't work. Okay, how about if I give you the exponential equation? Of course, e to the minus 1 equals 1 over e, so I can easily solve that problem. But let's write this as the logarithmic equation. Well, you would say to yourself, what here? Okay, e to the minus 1, so that's log base e 
to the minus 1 equals y. Okay, so that would be ln y equals 1. Or minus 1, excuse me. This one, e to the e, well, I don't know what that is. It's some value. But here I would say e equals log base e. That gives me the e to the e power of y. And that gives me e equals ln y. So just getting a little use to this notation here. What are some applications of this? We can solve exponential and logarithmic equations, of course, using this. Now, you might find it useful in this x logarithmic equation, ln x equals minus 3, to remember that this is log base e. Okay, ln x equals log base e, and then that gives you e to the minus 3 equals x. And that, of course, is your solution. You could write that as 1 over e cubed if you wished. Why don't you take a moment to do this one? See if you can write this as a logarithm, and then give the solution. So this is log base e of x equals 0.6. So that's e to the point 6 equals x. And again, you can approximate that. Here, how do we solve this exponential equations? Well, we can solve it by taking the logarithm of both sides. But in this case, the logarithm that's most useful to use is log base e, which I'm just going to write ln. Log base e of e to the x is just x. What power do I raise e to to get e to the x? That's just x. So my answer is ln of 2.5. Again, you could use your calculator and get ln 2.5. And that's approximately equal to 0.916. See if you can try this one on your own. And then start the video when you're ready. Again, I'm going to write ln e to the x equals ln 0.8. You could say x equals ln 0.8. And if you do that on your calculator, you get minus 0.223 or so for that particular one there. A couple of more applications we might look at. Let's go back to our interest formula for compounding continuously. Using this interest formula, find the annual rate of interest required for money to double in 10 years. Now, notice if you start off with p dollars, doubling is 2p. So I want s to be 2p in 10 years. I don't know my interest rate, but I know my years are 10. Now, this looks like an impossible problem, but realize this is p times e to the 10r. So we can divide both sides by p. This gives you this. Now, how do you solve this? I would take logarithms, and I would use log base e here. This gives you ln2 equals 10r. Then divide both sides by 10. And this gives you your interest rate. Now, in this case, my calculator is very useful. If I take ln2 divided by 10, I see that my interest rate that I need is approximately 6.9%. So just about 7% for my uh, money to double in 10 years. Here's a problem from chemistry, uh, similar to a problem on WebAssign, where I'm trying to solve for Q. So this is an equation from chemistry. So I'm going to solve for Q. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of this e to the 0 power. So I subtract it from both sides. Then I want to divide both sides by negative 1. If I divide both sides by negative 1, of course, it goes away here. And here, I'm just going to switch the order of these, e0 minus e. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by n to the f over rt. So nf times e0 minus e over rt equals ln q. 
Now, how do you undo this logarithm? Remember, this is log base e of q. So you're going to do e to this crazy thing equals q, and you have your final answer. e to this very large formula equals q, and that gives me my final answer. I hope you found this video useful.